This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a drama, sci-fi, and thriller film called The Butterfly Effect 2. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. Nick Larson and his girlfriend Julie Miller go on a camping trip to celebrate Julie's 24th birthday, together with their best friends Trevor and Amanda, who are also a couple. While gathering firewood for their bonfire, Nick and Trevor talk about how closing their own accounts for the next couple of months could turn their lives around. Nick and Trevor work together as senior sales representatives for a software company and fantasize about retiring early. When they get back, the four enjoy themselves and take a picture to capture the moment. Nick takes Julie to a spot where they went three years ago. Julie wants to say something to Nick, but he interrupts her. He pulls out a necklace as his birthday gift for Julie and puts it on her. Julie mentions her plans to pursue her master's degree in photography in New York, but Nick doesn't want her to move thousands of miles away from him. Instead, he promises to help her open her own art gallery once he gets promoted. Suddenly, Nick gets a call from work for an urgent meeting. Julie is against it as it's her birthday, but Nick must attend the meeting as he is up against Dave Bristol, his rival for the promotion he's expecting. The four of them leave in Nick's SUV. Inside the car, Nick asks Julie for his sunglasses and kisses her when she gives them to him. Trevor curses Bristol for cutting their vacation short, but Nick can't let Bristol get promoted instead of him. At the back seat, Trevor kisses Amanda, and Julie, thinking it's sweet, removes her seatbelt to take a good picture of the couple properly. Out of nowhere, one of the tires explodes, and they stop in the middle of the road. An oncoming semi-truck swerves left to right as it tries to avoid the car. Nick attempts to start the car in a panic, but it's too late, and the truck hits them. Nick ends up in a coma in the hospital, and his mom, Catherine, sits beside his bed. Suddenly, Nick starts seizing, and a nurse calls Code Blue, but Catherine inexplicably calms him down and tells the nurse he gets nightmares sometimes. One night, Nick finally wakes up and sees Catherine beside him. He asks his mom where Julie and his friends are, and Catherine reveals that he was the only survivor. After some time, Nick recovers and gets out of the hospital. He mourns and reminisces about the last time they were together and his plans to settle down with Julie. Nick visits the campfire and leaves the necklace he gave Julie on her birthday at the spot where he gave it to her. One night, his mom calls, but he doesn't answer. So she leaves a message saying that she's worried about his headaches. While listening to the voice message, Nick stares at a picture of him and Julie. Suddenly, it seems like it's moving. He becomes disoriented and the room shudders and shakes. He gets an extreme headache and his nose starts to bleed. He drops the picture and the pain subsides. One year later, Nick goes back to work and his coworker Ted tells him Bristol is looking for him. Because of the accident, Bristol got the promotion instead of him. Bristol reminds him about the spreadsheets he expected even when Nick says he submitted it already. Bristol nags him and tells him their 4 o'clock sales presentation has been moved to 11 o'clock. Bristol suggests he should do the pitching if he can't handle it as he's aware of Nick's reoccurring headaches. But Nick insists on giving the spreadsheet and doing the pitch. These actions are Bristol's way of establishing his superiority to Nick, even telling Nick to clean up his messy desk. During the meeting with their potential investors, Nick pitches software that enables their handheld device to communicate with any wireless technology. As part of the presentation, he shows freshly snapped photos of their clients from his phone into his slideshow. Nick moves on to the next slide showing a group photo with Trevor. Nick impresses the clients as he answers their follow-up questions and is about to nail the presentation. But seeing his friend's photo triggers an excruciating headache. He trembles as he stops the slideshow. This incident ends up blowing the sales presentation. Their boss, Ron Callahan, discusses Nick's situation in his office while Bristol listens. Bristol tells Callahan about Nick's headaches. Since Nick causes the company to lose a significant investor, Callahan suspends him for a week. Nick looks through the last photographs Julie took inside the car, before the fatal accident, reminiscing the memories at his home. While staring at them, he gets another blinding headache, 
and spills beer on his table. The room begins to shake, and time seems to go out of order as the beer flows back up the table and the wall clock's hands behind him run in reverse. Suddenly, he finds himself back in the car with his friends and Julie before the accident. He asks Julie for his sunglasses and leans in for a kiss, confused as if he's having deja vu. Trevor curses Bristol again, and Julie takes off her seatbelt to take a good picture of Trevor and Amanda kissing. Seeing this, Nick exclaims at Julie to put her seatbelt back on, which she does. Just like before, a tire blows and the car slides uncontrollably on the road until it stops in the middle. Aware of what will happen next, Nick starts the car in a panic. He steps on the gas, drives out of the way of the oncoming truck, and hits a tree. He wakes up in pain, lying on the floor and with his nose bleeding. He looks around and realizes the apartment looks different, having a warmer vibe with paintings and flowers. A familiar voice calls to him, startling him. Julie arrives, alive and wearing the necklace he gave her. He longingly kisses her and smells her hair while Julie wonders what's going on. He tells her he was having a nightmare, smothers her with hugs and kisses, and he can't believe Julie is alive. Julie tells him they need to go because it's her birthday. At the restaurant, Nick tells Julie that he had another version of his life where she was dead. Julie assures him it was just a bad dream, and what matters is they're together. Trevor and Amanda arrive and greet Julie with a happy birthday. While Nick is ecstatic to see his friends again, nothing is unusual for them as they live in a timeline where nobody died in the accident. Nick learns Trevor and Amanda are getting married, and he's responsible for planning Trevor's bachelor party, as he's the best man. After dinner, Nick and Julie make love at home. In the office, Nick researches dreams, PTSD, migraines, alternate reality, and things of the sort to figure out what he's experiencing. He finds an article about Jason Treborn, a patient diagnosed with selective memory loss complicated by schizophrenia that altered his senses of reality. He shuts off his monitor when Trevor visits him. Ted lets them know Bristol is calling for a staff meeting and wants to see Trevor first. At the meeting, Bristol announces that they had lost five deals. Trevor's account was one of them, and the reason he was called in first was because Bristol had to fire him. Nick confronts him in front of everybody and questions his decision to fire Trevor immediately when he knows how hard the job is. Considering that the account that Trevor lost was originally Bristol's, Nick accuses him of giving it to Trevor on purpose, knowing that it was a lost cause. Threatened by his accusation, Bristol fires Nick as well. As Nick is leaving, Trevor tells him to go and apologize, as it wasn't his problem. Still, Nick sticks to his decision as he believes life is too short to work for a company that promotes someone else despite his efforts. Julie dislikes Nick's decision and tells him he's better off with a job. Julie also mentions that she still can't get past what they lost in the accident. They have been financially struggling for the past year because Julie, being a small-time photographer, is not getting paid enough since Nick talked her out of going to New York for her master's. Nick tells her it's about the big picture. Since losing her before, he feels like nothing else matters other than they are together. Julie points out how he's such a salesman for talking her in and out of things. Later that night, Nick grabs a beer from the fridge and sees a picture of the four of them from last year's Christmas party, sticking in the fridge door. He looks at it and sees Bristol. Remembering how he's done it before, he stares at it in an attempt to jump back to that timeline. He experiences the same pre-time travel episode, and before he knows it, he's at the Christmas party. He looks around and finds Bristol, who isn't promoted yet as vice president. Nick excuses himself from his friends to get a drink. He gets a glass full of wine, pretends to trip in front of Bristol, and deliberately spills the drink onto Bristol's crotch. Everyone laughs, embarrassing Bristol. He proceeds to Bristol's office and looks for the folder for StrikeLine Technologies, the investors he and Bristol were competing for to get promoted. He grabs it, and suddenly, the room changes, and his nose starts to bleed again. He looks at a mirror in front of him and sees himself disassociating when he comes to it. He looks around and realizes he is in his own private office. He starts to feel an excruciating headache and hits his back against the mirror. He gets up and wipes the blood off his face. He sees a planner and scans to October 27, 2007, marked as Trevor and Amanda's wedding day. He goes out of the office and comes over to Bristol, who's still a senior sales representative. 
Bristol greets him respectfully as Nick slowly realizes that he's in another timeline where he's the vice president, which means he was the one who closed the strike line deal, not Bristol. Nick learns from Bristol that Trevor is at an offsite meeting, assuring him that his friend is also alive in this timeline. He also establishes his superiority by telling Bristol to clean his messy desk, to get back at him. Later, Callahan invites Nick over to dinner with a significant potential investor. Nick says he's going and calls him Mr. Callahan, to which Callahan laughs at since in this timeline, Nick calls him by his first name, Ron. When Nick is about to go home, he grabs his car keys from his pocket and realizes it is different. He presses it, and to his disbelief, a sports car behind him beeps. He calls Julie and learns she now owns a photography company. He leaves her a message inviting her to dinner after his client meeting. Nick comes home and sees how good his life is in this timeline, as his place is now aesthetically extravagant. During dinner with the potential investor, Fuentes, Callahan is also with his daughter, Grace. He asks Nick to present the number as they attempt to close him as a client. Nick hesitates as he has no memory of what must be discussed. Callahan stares at him in dismay until he's able to dig his own memories from this timeline and starts talking about their handheld wireless technology that can double the investor's company's profit. This seems to convince Fuentes to invest. Nick goes into the restroom when Grace follows him. Grace seduces him and hints that they've been having an affair for a while. Although hesitant at first, he finally gives in and they make love. Grace gets Nick's phone from his pocket and takes a picture of them making out. Nick drives home and parks his car in the building where Trevor is waiting for him. He has a wound in his face as a reminder from one of their investors, Malcolm, with whom Trevor closed a deal with but wants his money back. Nick assures Trevor he'll take care of it. When Nick asks Trevor about Julie, he reveals that she and Nick have broken up. The following day, Nick goes to Callahan's office where he learns Fuentes bailed out. Nick tells Callahan they have a problem with the investor Trevor closed. Callahan tells him the company is broke since he could not close the deal several months ago for a potential investor. Strike Line Technologies. When he grabbed the file from Bristol's desk during that Christmas party, he approached them in desperation to close a deal with them, but blew it off instead. Callahan tells him they don't have a working software because of that, so Nick formulates another plan to settle Trevor's issue. Nick still tries to contact and look for Julie. Nick receives a call from his mom who's concerned about him and wants him to see his dad's doctor. She also wants to see him, but Nick dismisses her and hangs up. Later that night, Nick goes to Malcolm's club where Julie is shooting a fashion show. Nick barely recognizes her due to Julie's new hairstyle. He's excited to see her until he learns that Julie has a new boyfriend who helped her launch her photography career. Nick pushes to fix their relationship, but Julie has already moved on, and his sales talk won't work with her anymore. Nick meets Malcolm in a separate room where Trevor is already present. Nick tries to convince Malcolm that his investment is at work, and even gives him a check for 10% of his investment as partial money back in desperation for him to leave Trevor alone. Malcolm accepts it, but is still unhappy, so he smashes Trevor's face against the glass table, breaking it and killing Trevor. Malcolm then orders his thug to take Nick out, but Nick runs away. Malcolm's guy chases him and shoots him, but Julie comes out of nowhere and gets hit. Nick takes her to the ladies' room and locks it. He sees the blood in his hands and realizes that Julie is dying. He runs over and puts Julie in his arms. He opens his phone to the photo Grace took of them kissing in an attempt to jump into that timeline to change their fates. But before he could, Malcolm's thug breaks in and knocks him unconscious. When Nick comes to, someone is giving him head. He raises the sheet and sees Wayne, Malcolm's partner. Nick tries to run for it, but Wayne stops him while insulting Trevor's and Julie's deaths. Angered, Nick pushes him out of the door, causing Wayne to fall down the stairs. Nick uses the opportunity to escape. At home, Nick confesses everything to Catherine and demands to see his dad. His mom then reveals his father committed suicide. Catherine, who seems to have an idea that Nick and his dad are the same, reminds him he shouldn't control everything and that he needs to see the doctor. Catherine advises him to let things go, but Nick is still adamant about correcting their lives. 
Nick asks Amanda to meet him at a bar and bring a photograph of the four of them from Julie's 24th birthday. Amanda is scared for Trevor and thinks something is wrong, but Nick simply promises that Trevor is okay. At his place, Nick stares at the picture he asked from Amanda, and time travels back to the campsite. He tells Julie to pursue her masters in New York and breaks up with her, thinking it would give her a future better than what he saw from the other timelines. Julie then reveals she's pregnant, but he doesn't respond in shock. Upset, Julie takes off with his SUV. Nick steals a car from a couple and follows her, frightened she might meet the same accident as before, and dies alone. Julie slows down because of a truck blocking her from speeding up. Nick grabs the chance to pull alongside Julie in the wrong lane and urges her to pull over. He apologizes her and tells her that he made a mistake for breaking up with her, as he didn't know she was pregnant. An incoming vehicle approaches Nick's lane, and Nick drives off a cliff. A year later in New York, Julie tells her son she has to go to class. She named her son after Nick, and just like his father, he experiences a pre-time travel effect as he stares at a photo of his mom's 24th birthday. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.